your, your testimony. I was thinking about uh, an event last year where I'm at National uh, Reagan Airport, and um, the pilot announced that we can't take off because it's too hot out, and our fuel load to get to Oregon uh, means we may, we may end up in the river if we try to take off. And so we had to wait for an hour and a half to unload uh, gas or jet fuel off the plane. And then we had to land in Chicago to refuel to get to, to Oregon. And I'd heard about this sort of thing happening in, in Phoenix, uh, where 110 degrees and, and with the heat, the air gets thinner, you don't have as much lift. But in Washington, DC, I had never heard of this. Um, just on that particular issue, and, and I think I'm directing this to you, Dr. Keenan, um, are we seeing that uh, heat is driving a problem with runways being too short? Uh, and is there a whole transportation infrastructure expansion that has to happen uh, for jets to get off the ground? Yes, we're seeing this uh, uh, different types of fleets, if you will, both cargo uh, and domestic passenger fleets, uh, particularly larger planes, transcontinental and overseas flights uh, are limited, their payload and fuel capacity. And this is heat at the surface level, um, but also at different levels of the atmosphere that are creating essentially uh, stronger headwinds or steering currents that uh, burn more fuel in flight as well. Uh, this is a challenge not just for our domestic economy uh, and infrastructure, Infrastructure. It's also a challenge in terms of national security in the military because we're going to have to expand airfields and the length of airfields uh, really uh, throughout our, our system. So it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Uh, it's a challenge that uh, the aviation industry is addressing uh, by some measure in terms of efficiency, uh, fuels, fleet design, et cetera, et cetera. But at, at its core, we are going to have to extend the length of runways somewhere in the order of 20% the extension of the current lengths across the airport system. Right. Uh, thank you. I think that's a piece many Americans would be surprised about. Uh, the, um, I want to turn to, uh, to you, Governor Edwards. Thank you for, for joining us. The issues in my state from climate chaos are different than your state. My state, the forests are, are burning. The snowpack in the Cascades has lost uh, 240 inches over the last 90 years. It, it, everything's effect, the drought is affecting ranchers and, and farmers, the, the pine beetles, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost apocalyptic uh, set of, of, of plagues. But I believe in your state it's more about hurricanes, rising sea levels, coastal erosion. Is that a fair way to describe it? Yes, sir, that, that's fair, but we are impacted uh, by things that wouldn't be intuitively obvious. So for example, because of the drought in Iowa and elsewhere, we have a low river that's allowing salt water to come in from the Gulf and compromise drinking water yep. uh, for communities uh, in Louisiana who have always taken their drinking water out of the river. And so we're having to do emergency work, uh, the state, the parishes, but also working with the Corps of Engineers, and we, we really appreciate their help, in order to build uh, uh, sills in order to, to stop the, the salt water and so forth. So it is a myriad of things, and, and, and w things that happen in one part of the country uh, actually have a cascading effect uh, in other parts of the country. Are, just for the drinking water challenge, are you looking at uh, billions of dollars of infrastructure changes? No, sir, it's, it's not that expensive. Now, uh, obviously, if this becomes something that repeats itself too frequently, obviously a more permanent solution would have to be found. Uh, it's happened before, um, but it, it last happened just a, a couple of years ago. So if we see this happening more frequently, then we're going to have to do something that, that would be more expensive. Yes, sir. And then I, I believe I've seen stories about your coastal lands uh, eroding. Yes, and sir. Are, are there investments in uh, adaptation that you're trying to kind of, if you will, hold the ocean back? Or you just say, no, we can't, it's impossible. I thought I saw islands being created, more artificial oh, islands, we, barriers, yes, sir. and so forth. You know, we're having tremendous success with our Coastal Restoration Protection Program, and it is a science-based program, um, and we are investing a minimum of a billion dollars a year. Uh, and it's ecosystem restoration. And by the way, when you restore ecosystems, you provide storm surge buffer, and you actually protect uh, populations and, and infrastructure. So it's actually protection. But we also have projects that are designed uh, uh, primarily for protection. 
But we're having uh, success, and, and we believe that, that if we can implement our program as we envision it today, we will have less risk in 50 years than we do today. Even with the climate change happening, the sea level rise between, uh, I think, 1.8 uh, and 2.5 and feet over the next 50 years, which is kind of the low in the, in the, in the medium estimate. And in that ecosystem restoration, you're creating uh, artificial or man-made barrier islands, and is that expensive? Oh, yes, sir. It, it, it is very expensive, um, and, and we're we're creating and, and for the most part restoring the islands where they were and 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 so forth. It is expensive, um, but it helps because that that too dissipates the storm surge and it provides buffer. It also provides uh, habitat. Uh, for example, the brown pelicans. And if you may have seen what you saw was probably uh, Queen Bess Island, um, but the brown pelican happens to be our state bird. It had it and and it, it the areas where it would nest. Uh, it greatly reduced uh, within a few weeks of us finishing this island, the birds were back, uh, and so it, it, it serves a lot of purposes. But 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 primarily that was done for protection. Yeah. Well, I, I have plenty more I could ask, but my time's up. Thank you very much. And the witnesses are willing to take questions for the record. Um,